like to invite our next speaker, uh, Dr. Dong. Dr. Dong from Vietnam. He practices as a consultant in Saigon, a very uh, enthusiastic surgeon. And if you follow him on uh, social media, I think he's got some of the really difficult cases that he challenges himself and makes us also, you know, leaves, uh, leaves us uh, wondering how does he do them. So Dong is going to tell us uh, how he tailors and what he means by tailored uh, PCNL, Dong. All, okay. all up to you. Thank you, Binet. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Dong. Uh, I'm from Saigon. Uh, this is my honor to present a topic about a tailor in the supply personnel. Uh, I use the term the peace box approach. As you know that, oh, okay. uh, can, oh, can you, sorry. Uh, okay, I have no disclosure. Sorry. Okay. So I will explain to you about the peace box. Peace box, that means the clothes that match uh, specific for the customer. And the people's approach in PCNL, especially in supply PCNL, that means that you're using the instrument that fits to the patient anatomy. Um, we deal with the PCNL, that means we concern about the kidney anatomy, especially the, callus, the anatomy of the callus the one of the callus, the, uh, the morphology of the callus, you know that the, the patient has the different uh, uh, size of the patient and also the different size of the uh, callus. And on the guideline of the EU guidelines, they mentioned about how the, the indication of the PCNL for the stone side, but they don't mention about the anatomy of the callus. So, so that's why you see that even the very big stone side or very small stone side, they have the role of the PCNL. And if you use the PCNL with the uh, concern about the, the anatomy of the callus, there's a lot of complications. Of the, there's a multi-analysis in the multi-center study in the CRS complications of the PCNL uh, around 20 to 30%. And there's a lot of risk factors, uh, uh, factors of the PCNL complications. And one of the risk factors is the check size. As we know that the more check size, the bigger the check size, the more uh, bleeding or the more uh, transfusion rate we have. That's why there's a trend thing, uh, there's a common way in the PCNL. That's why uh, they, re they want to reduce the, the check size to keep the less, less uh, uh, blood bleeding. And, uh, but you know that if you use the small side of the track, maybe the operation is longer and maybe there are lots of concern about high intrarenal pressure that cause a septic after the PCNL. And then nowadays there's a lot of different side tracks in PCNL from the, the beginning about 30 friends now we downside to around five friends and the term about the mini track is um is created by the two germany guys from the dr seven lamb and dr udo nakili and at the first time when dr udo nakili uh, introduced the term about the mini invasive concept that means he doesn't mean that this is downside the track that means he wants that we using the the uh, the procedure that is a, a shorter operation time, less uh, complications, and a good outcome. So the mini invasive is more than the outside the track. It's a lot of things you consider to choose for the patient. And for the concept of Dr. Udo Nagili, the guys who invent invented the mini tracks. This is the open system, and he had a uh, four instrument track size for MIPL, MIPMS, and XS, the different track size with the open system. And he named the track size, it's not depend on the, the numbers, it depends on the t shirt size like L, M, S, and XS. And you note that. We, with a doctor, that means we're choosing the instrument fit the patient, not vice versa. And 
one size doesn't fit up for all the patients. And uh, that means I, I uh, prefer the term the P-box approach. That means you must do the right track size to prevent the complications. As you know that if you use a very too big side track, you make the laceration and cause the bleeding. But if you use very small side track, it makes your operation time is longer and cause a lot of high risk of infections. That means the, uh, the, the side of the track must fit the patient anatomy. That means the width of the side track must inside the width of the callus, the target callus you enter. And moreover, to prevent the high intrarenal pressure, the side track and the nervous scope must be four frame different. So you have the outflow, the inflow continuously. This is the own study of the pelvic backflow in 1924. It, this is a very old study uh, because the bio, uh, biolovenous black flow, if the pressure in renal pressure is above 20 to 30 millimeter uh, in mercury, it's a high risk of septic semia. So if you consider about the closed system in, the, in, in this column and the open system in this column with the, side, with the different uh, track size, if you use a closed system, you always have the high intrarenal pressure, that means over 30 millimeters in mercury. It's a high grade of bilovenous backflow and the grade of septic after procedure. That means the open system prevents a high intrarenal pressure. And you know that if you use the open system, the, the pressure in the kidneys is not a change so much. That means in my experience, and I learned from Dr. Variva, I always choose the, the, the track side bigger than four friends than the nephroscope. So how do I choose the mini invasive treatment in supply position? There's some step up to a better outcome, shorter operation time, and have a, have a less stay in the patient. So when I set up patient position, I choose the supply position because for me, supply position is shorter than our time. I choose the track fit to the, to the patient callus, so I limit the complications. And for the faster and less X-ray exposure, I use the stack dilation. And for the stone uh, extract, extracting, I use a vacuum cleaner. And for acetin strategy, for less painful after operation, I use a very small tube. And in case very simple case, I use, usually use a tubeless. So first I preferred to the supply position from the 1917, uh, I never do any case in front anymore. So for me, supply position very versatile and very easy to set up a uh, position. In my experience, I just use very simple uh, instruments Happy everywhere in the OR, I use the two poster, two portal of the natty chloro, put one in the patient pack and one in the patient cluteal region. And I make the flank is free and just tilt in the patient a little bit. This is a, my video clip. I present the case with the set up the patient position. If you see that, I set up very fast and without any uh, uh, specific assistant. Uh, so, sorry, I cannot uh, use the, I can open the video clip. But when I set up by chain position, uh, this, uh, not, not like in the prime position, I only set up by, by myself without any specific uh, uh, helping from the nurses. And for the choosing between the mini track and conventional track, I always estimate the track size uh, by the intra operation by retrograde uh, uh, inject the contrast, so I know that the width of the target, con target callus I must enter. So if I do with the long narrow callus, I will choosing the mini approach. I prefer the 16 friends uh, uh, amlas with the 12 friend nephroscope. It's just at least a four friend difference. <coughs> and for the widen callus, I prefer the conventional track with a 24 arm blast and just about, around 20 frame nephroscope. 
So in this uh, case, I prefer the MAPM around 16 or uh, uh, 17 French amplast drug. And for this case, I prefer over 20 or uh, 24 uh, amplast drug for this case because it's very wide and callous. And for shorter, the it's great uh, time I use the step dilators after I put in the hydrophilic guideline down into the collector system and fast dilator with a friend, I will choose the amlast uh, stack dilator. That's mean I put the, the guideline and then I put the 16 friends and then 24 friends. This is the stack dilator. Make uh, your dilation is faster and make your OR is faster. And for the very fibrosis cases, for the previous open surgery cases, I use ankyl metallic dilators. This is the video clip. Uh, I hope I can play it. Uh, um, this is a video clip I show for you about uh, how I, I use the 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 the, the stake dilator in supply personnel. Oh, sorry, I cannot play it. May I skip it? And for the for the state dilator, this invention for a long time ago for 2001, and for the meta analysis about the four uh, uh, methods like uh, ankyl dilator, balloon dilator, um, amlast dilator, the state dilator make you shorter the hour time and less is great and the, the safe and safety and the efficacy is the same with, uh, with the four uh, the letters. And for the extracting the stone, I use, I prefer to use the vacuum cleaner effect. And for me, in supply business now, because of the, the track size, sometimes it's go down size. So the vacuum cleaner effect is more effective in the supply business now than in the prom uh, business now. So how can I do it? I move the cyst near the stone and I slowly put back the scope so the stone will go up, go into the scope, into the, the track and slowly go out with the, with the track. So it, it set the time, it's not like in the prone position, you must use a basket or a grasper to take out the stone. It takes a long time, a long uh, steps. And for the uh, shorter, the hour, shorter the hospital stays, and make the patient less painful. I usually use the very small, uh, smallness uh, tip uh, after the PCNL because I think that the tip in the PCNL uh, doesn't have any role in, in terminate or stopping the bleeding. It's just for the prevent uh, or prevent infections and sometimes it's monitoring the patients. Because you see, you when you do PCNL, that means you do the iatrogenic the kidney trauma, and when you get a kidney trauma, uh, you you just uh, terminate it or just conservative. You never put the tip to 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 stop the bleeding in the kidney trauma. And for the case, very simple case, I use the tubeless PCNL, so patient have the quick quickly recovery and less painful after the PCNL. So this is the, the pictures I do with the routine cases. I always use the small tip without any balloon. And for the very simple case, I use a totally tubeless. And for the conclusion, I use a turn people approach or tailor the, 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 for the patient in supply personnel. That means you use the right instrument for to the your patient, not vice versa. And for uh, preventing the complication, the check side must fit to the callus. And for the invasive treatment, it's not only mean that you downside the track, it's but a lot of meaning things after that. It must be shorter the time. For me, the survival position will help you shorter the overall time. This must be limited the complications. That means you must do the very fit track side to your patient. And this must be a very high soil free rate with a vacuum cleaner effect. So the tiny, a small fragment can go out by gravity and let this great exposure by the state dilator and shorter the hoping stay. 
with more small tip or tuples after procedure. And thank you. This is my end slide. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dong. That was a, a very bespoke presentation, very uh, to the point. There's a couple of questions for you. Uh, why not use balloon dilators? This balloon dilator is so expensive and it's not available in my uh, hour. So I don't have any experience in balloon dilator. Okay. As for me, there's a quote, there's a talk about balloon, it's just for the birthday, not for business. <laughs> All right, that's an interesting take home for people. So uh, the other question is, um, if you are doing a supine PCNL and uh, do you need to ever convert to a prone in your experience? Uh, I never convert to prone anymore. I never do uh, supply and convert to prone. No case. Okay. And uh, on another platform, they ask if you, uh, in one simple sentence, three centimeter, hard stone, upper pole, what's your choice of uh, PCNL? Uh, I will choose a pipe now because there's a, a study of, uh, with Dr. Guru Kisti and Maro Sofa a long, uh, maybe uh, five years ago. They say that comparison about the lower callus go to upper callus in supply is more easier than prone. So if, I, if you have a very hard stone in the upper bone, I will choose a pipe now, go to a lower callus. If, if I fail with this, I will try with the retrograde plasmoscope. All right. And there's a comment by Dr. Paxi who says uh, Professor Lesrick's technique of renal displacement is a good one for upper pole. Uh, your comment on that. Do you uh, like the, uh, there's always a controversy on that technique. Now to the, to the, to the, to the outside and then punch the upper pole. For me, it's, it's so, it's so toxic, toxic technique, so I don't like it. Okay, Don. So uh, thank you so much, and um, I'll introduce myself. Uh, I'm uh, okay, taking you. on the next topic.